What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Shazam Kit, which is a brand new framework from Apple as of WWDC 2021, and it's a, a super not creative name. This is coming on the heels of their acquisition of Shazam, the music, uh, basically uh, the music app that lets you figure out, you know, what song is playing. They bought it many, many years ago for a ton of money. And now they've uh, opened it up to us third-party devs. So basically you can recognize audio, you know, popular songs and even custom tracks. So we're gonna be writing some code for this and integrating it first kind of look. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you start by destroying the like button down below. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS, Swift, Swift UI, wanna stick around for future videos. That all said, let's get into the video. All right, let's go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. Bear in mind, this is Xcode 13, beta one. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and call this uh, project Recognize Music. We're gonna make sure our language is set to Swift and our interface is storyboard. The interface really doesn't matter for today's video. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I shall toss it onto my desktop here. Let's go ahead and close this right panel. We'll expand our Xcode window and uh, we're gonna jump into our view controller file. Now I've actually got a song here on my desktop. It's an MP3, it's kind of irrelevant what you use, but for example purposes, we're gonna drag this into our project and we're gonna go ahead and make sure this box is checked to copy it and then we'll actually expand our Xcode window and we'll get started in our view controller. So there is a brand new framework, obviously by the title of this video, called Shazam Kit, which is basically building on top of Apple's acquisition of Shazam many, many years ago. And it allows you to recognize uh, either songs in the Shazam catalog, so you know any like popular song or even custom songs. Uh, so we're gonna work with catalogs today. So we're gonna write a function down here to recognize songs. So let's go ahead and call it up here. So we'll say recognize song. And then here we're gonna create it and we're gonna walk through the workflow recognizing a song. So disclaimer that this is in beta still and I've got it to work sometimes, but sometimes uh, you know it's not reliable. One thing you do need to do is enable the Shazam app service uh, in your developer account. So you will need a developer account to use their backend service that uh, all this stuff is built uh, on top of. But we'll talk about the code today in your actual iOS app. So first things first, let's talk about the steps. So what we want to use is a Shazam session. The session is going to have a delegate, which will actually give us a failure or our recognized uh, results. And the result has things like title and artwork and artists and all that good stuff. Then we want to get our audio and convert it into a buffer to pass into uh, what Shazam calls a signature. So the way they actually identify songs is pretty interesting. They don't actually pass the whole song up to their service in like the cloud. They generate a unique signature for the piece of audio based on some algorithms internally. And once we have a signature uh, created from a generator, so we'll say signature generator, we'll go ahead and, that's not how you spell generator, we'll go ahead and create signature and then we'll try to match. So all this is pretty straightforward. It looks like a lot, but it's really not. So let's go ahead and do these piece by piece. So first thing, we wanna go ahead and create a session. So I'm gonna go ahead and say a session is going to be a, I think they do SH as a prefix, so a SH session, so a Shazam session. The next thing we wanna do is go ahead and assign this guy's delegate, and this is going to be self. And basically we're gonna conform up here to a SH session delegate. And before we continue further, let's go ahead and bring in those uh, those delegate functions. So there is did uh, match or did find, I guess is what they call it. And then there is a did not find, which will throw a error if you know something went wrong. So we're gonna unwrap the error and just print it out. And we'll deal with this in a second get results. And now that we've got the delegate, let's continue on. The next thing we want to do is create a audio buffer. So this part might get a little confusing if you're not super familiar with like AV kit and AV foundation, but I'll talk you guys through it. So we're going to want to go ahead and create a do catch block in the catch. We're going to go ahead and print the error 
and we're going to move all of this commented stuff that's remaining into here to do each of the steps one by one. So we've brought in this song already into Xcode. It's a fairly popular Maroon 5 song. I'm not going to play it for copyright purposes, but um, we are going to get first and foremost this uh, audio file. So we'll say get track. And the way we do it is we want to get a URL for it. So we're going to say this is in the main bundle. So we'll say bundle.main. And we want to get a URL for the resource name song with file extension mp3, not mpr. And uh, if we're not able to get it, of course, like something went wrong. So we'll go ahead and just break from our uh, block here by returning. And we'll say failed to get song URL just so we know what's going on. Now that we've got this uh, actual URL, we want to get the create audio file, right? We want to create an audio file uh, from the URL. So the way we could do this is say file is AV audio file. And if we look at the constructors, uh, one of them, uh, the one that we want is for reading, which takes in a file URL. And this guy can actually throw, so we need to prefix it with a try keyword, hence we're in a do block here. And uh, it's just giving us a warning that we have not used that yet. Now that we've created a file, we need to create a AV audio PCM buffer. So it sounds fancy, but it's basically a, uh, a collection of bytes that make up the audio file. So we're gonna go ahead and say, guard let buffer is going to be a AV audio PCM buffer. Totally forget what PCM stands for, not really that important, but let's go ahead and create it. And the one that we want takes in a format and a frame capacity, and this is pretty important, so I'll explain some of this stuff. So the format's pretty easy. We're just gonna say file.processingFormat, and this guy is going to take in an AV audio frame count. So the Shazam Kit framework basically expects to get a portion of the parts of the audio. So we don't want to generate a signature from the entire audio track. We just want a part of it. And generally, and I think actually Apple actually limits how big of a audio piece you can pass to Shazam to create a signature. So you can actually say file.length and I sometimes arbitrarily, arbitrarily just divide it. But if you have an error, it'll tell you that your frames are too large. So now that we've got this created, we can go ahead and simply say return. The next thing we want to do is read our file into the buffer. So we're going to say file and we're going to say read into the buffer. In other words, put the actual bytes in the file, the AV audio file into the buffer with the given capacity we've defined up here. And let me actually toss a print in here in case this goes wrong. Failed to create a buffer. And the next magic piece is creating a signature from a conveniently uh, ob conveniently created object Apple has provided for us called a SH uh, signature generator. And it basically does what you know, you'd imply it to do. We're gonna say generator and we are going to try to append uh, a buffer. And it gives you an optional parameter here if you wanna you know, string together multiple buffers. Uh, but we're just gonna do one. You could go ahead and piece apart this file into you know, multiple chunks and append them all here, but we're not gonna do that today. And that's creating the signature basically. Uh, rather, uh, setting up the generator and creating the signature is pretty simple. We're going to say signature is going to be generator. That's not how you spell generator. Generator dot signature. This will spit out the signature from the uh, appended uh, buffers. And finally, we're going to go ahead and say signature dot uh, match or find or what the heck is it called? Ah, it's actually called, I believe, session dot match. And we're going to pass in the signature that we've created. So cool, so this is basically in a nutshell how this works. So let's go ahead and before we, actually let's go ahead and give this a run first. Um, so I have not configured the service here. So what you'll see, let's see what errors we get first and foremost. I'll try to change my uh, provisioning profile and ID here, but let's at least run it and make sure that, you know, we don't have anything too crazy going on. So there is our app installing nice and slow because the simulator must know that I'm doing a video and it can't do its job today. So it is launching. We should see something down here. I think we got an error. Let's see what's gone wrong. So it's saying duration is outside the valid range. So let's see what's going on. It's giving us a range here. 
we're supplying 18. The range for frames that it wants is 3 to 12. So this is what I was talking about in terms of dividing the length here by an arbitrary number. So I'm going to bump that 10 to 15. Uh, you probably want to more appropriately calculate this, but I'm basically guessing. We see here we have 12.5 is what we're passing, which is exceeding their range uh, top limit of 12. So let me bump the 16 to maybe, or 15 to 16. And let's see if that error goes away. All right, so that error has gone away, it looks like, but we are getting an error that's saying, please check that you've enabled the Shazam Kit app service in the for the app identifier. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the app ID here because I think I did this earlier and I got it working. So I'm gonna change this to be Shazam Kit Demo. And I had went ahead and uh, enabled this for this uh, bundle ID. Let's go ahead and see if it decides to do its job. Uh, it's been kind of flaky lately, so okay, so it's still giving us the error, so that's a little unfortunate, but we can still talk through, um, you know, this actually working and what the results look like. So if we come down to the delegate, so the failure is pretty, pretty obvious. We're actually getting the error printed because it's calling into here, but if you were able to get a successful uh, uh, match here, you're actually going to get uh, multiple media items potentially. So a match actually gives you an array of SH uh, matched media items because from a single request, you could match multiple pieces of audio. Let's say you're, I don't know, sound matching, you know, a bunch of audio input from the mic. So what you could do is you could iterate over this. So you can say for item, or we could just say items dot uh, for each. And we'll say item in. And what you could do is get a bunch of information from this. So you can get the title and all of these properties are in fact optional. So you wanna make sure you handle that appropriately. You can also get the artist and we're gonna coalesce this as well. And the one that I think is most uh, exciting and like relevant to a nice looking UI is the fact that you can actually get album artwork. So you can get artwork, uh, which is a URL and we're gonna get the absolute uh, URL and we'll say artwork URL. So there are actually some other interesting things that Apple talked about in a couple of their sessions related to you know, Shazam Kit being new. One is that of course you can show attribution for Apple Music, um, still not working, was hoping that would work maybe, but you can uh, go ahead and deep link the user into Apple Music. I super think they're not gonna allow that for third party apps, so like Spotify and whatnot. Uh, because Shazam is, you know, Apple owned at this point, but that'll be an interesting antitrust case to hear in the courts at some point. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is Shazam Kit in a nutshell. I think it offers um, some pretty interesting use cases, especially for apps um, that I, I think that are social, uh, like Instagram stories. I could totally see picking this up or any type of camera app. And I haven't dive uh, dived too deep into custom sounds yet, but I think there's a lot of potential there as well. So. Kind of unfortunate that the service error is still being thrown, even though the uh, Xcode should pick up the profile from the updated bundle ID. But let me know if you guys have any questions down below in the comments. Um, all this stuff is new, so I'll be exploring it uh, just like you guys. Like the video if you haven't done so already. It super, super helps, and I really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS, Swift, or Swift UI. I try to do daily videos here, and I'll continue to cover all the new stuff for iOS 15 and everything else announced at Dub Dub 2021 uh, earlier last week. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.